It's another NFL show. The Sick Podcast presented by Cherry River Hard Seltzer. Only 90 calories, natural flavors, no preservatives now available in Quebec grocery stores and the beer store. And I bring in the NFL fantasy guru from the NFL Network, Adam Rank. Hello. Hey, what's happening? Had a couple of Cherry Rivers over the weekend. Delightful. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, Join the club. Welcome, welcome, welcome. There's always room for more, by the way. (laughs) Adam, fantasy playoffs are finally here. How many leagues did you make it in? Well, this was a. I have I have some teams that were very good, so I'm very excited about this. But I had some teams that were awful, like could not the season could not have 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 finished soon enough. But a, a, my most important league, my league of record, mm-hmm. I finished seven and seven, which normally you get into the playoffs did yeah. not make it, and I'm remorse. I'm I'm morose today. I don't like it. I, I can't comment because I have no idea what the word means. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't go to a private high school. I went to a private college. I went to uh, uh, public. So I'm going to have to look it up. All right. Okay. Uh, I think I know what it means, though. Must starts. Which must starts are you playing to win the first round of the playoffs? Well, well if we start at the quarterback position, I think Kirk Cousins has deserved the opportunity to start in your fantasy leagues, despite scoring just around 15 points last week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He has been so good. And on Monday night, he's got a banged up Bears team who will probably follow suit of the Jacksonville Jaguars and be ushering their coach out the door here at some point. So I love Kirk Cousins. I love Taysom Hill. I know a lot of people still don't want to believe in Taysom Hill. I think you got to start him this week. You know, one of the things is he's averaged close to 22 fantasy points per game because he can run the football. And even though you know what's coming, You know what's happening. It's like watching Star Wars. I know the Death Star is going to blow up. I'm still highly entertained. Similarly, Taysom Hill is going to go out there and score some points. I do want to say one of the – if I run through a couple other positions, let's talk about James Robinson for a second. Yeah. Now, over the last couple of weeks, Urban Meyer has held him back. And even though I wanted some sort of varsity blues, Bud Kilmer getting fired at halftime and have Marvin Jones go out there and call the plays or whatever, James Robinson is back to being an RB1 this week. You can trust him. You can start him. Of course, the last two weeks, the Jaguars have played two very good teams and were blown out by something like 60 to four or whatever the score was. They're going to be in a very competitive game against the Houston Texans, who've allowed the second most fantasy points to running backs this season. So start him. I like Saquon Barkley. Again, last week, he was the running back 11. We talked about starting him last week. We're going to start him. Um, And then, you know, the wide receiver position, we love Brandon Ayuk. We love, um, oh, I kind of like Devonta Smith. Again, this week, too, you know, he's coming off the bye. He's got a great matchup against Washington, who've given up a lot of fantasy points to wide receivers. So I feel pretty good about that one. Which players do you think can carry uh, their teams through the playoffs? Well, you know what? One of the good things about having Jonathan Taylor is that he had that bye week very late. And so hopefully that you have a bye week in your fantasy playoffs. But I think that even if you are on it, if you have a team, I know I'm in this circumstance as well. Yeah. If you need to start Jonathan Taylor this week, I think you're going to be fine. Jonathan Taylor has had tough matchups in recent weeks against the Buccaneers and against the Buffalo Bills. He has scored six touchdowns in those two games. There's nobody that I fear with Justin, with, with, with Jonathan Taylor. So make sure that he's starting. He is lock solid. And all the guys that have been carrying you over the last couple of weeks, there's no real pitfalls out there. Nobody that you really need to avoid. So I think the guys that have been getting you there, as long as they, you know, honestly, we just want to make sure that they, they're on the field. If they're on the field and they're healthy and they're ready to go, then you should be fine. How about this week's daily fantasy lineups? Which players are you looking at? Well, I always like to find a lot of value at the tight end position. We got Ricky Seals Jones going up against the Philadelphia Eagles, who've given up a lot of fantasy points to the tight end position over the last pretty much the entirety of the season. So Ricky Seals Jones comes in at a very nice price point. And then I also want to try to find a wide receiver who could play huge and you're not going to pay a lot for him. And I think that's going to be Ray Ray McLeod this week. Ray Ray had a little bit of a mini breakout game last Thursday against the Minnesota Vikings. Everybody remembers what happens with Chase Claypool. You know who else, you know who else remembers that? Uh, Mike Tomlin. Yes. It's not going to surprise me if Chase Claypool has a diminished role this week. Yeah. Somebody like JJ McLeod, who had a great matchup against the Tennessee Titans. I'm sorry. I know our, our producer loves the Titans, and I'm not trying yes, to. Yes, I know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, he I'm, he I'm, reminds I'm, me like 20 times a day. I got it. Yeah. I'm picking the Titans to win the game, but I think that Ray Ray McLeod, obviously, along with Deontay Johnson, could be very good for you this week. Yeah. Uh, the turning point for Claypool's season, he should have never told his coach 
that he wanted loud music on during practice. And uh, there's a no-no right there. Okay. Um, I want to do rapid fire with you. Okay. So you already gave me the Titans over the Steelers. Yes, sir. Washington versus Philly. I'm going to go with Philadelphia coming off the bye week. Bengals versus Broncos. You know what? I still think that Denver's riding a wave of emotion after the tragic passing of Demarius Thomas. So give me the Broncos to uh, to take a stunner here. Packers versus Ravens. That's the Packers. I don't want the Packers to win, but they're they're a decent football team. Uh, they really are, yeah. And the Vikings versus your Bears. You know what? I'm not going to sit here. You're not going to ever get me to publicly pick the Bears. Okay. Or to pick against them, I should say. So okay. I'm picking the Bears. Listen, listen, Matt Nagy. Yeah, I guess game. you're telling me he's not going to get fired on Monday. He's, he, listen, he's probably going to get, he probably survived the season. I mean, I hope not because if you fire him, then you get a chance to interview these coaches in week 16. So yeah. Make sure go take advantage of that. But Matt Nagy is 12 and two against the Vikings and Lions. If there's two teams he's been great against, it's the Vikings and Lions. So I'm going to take the Bears. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, uh, yeah, we will talk to you before the holidays. Have a good week, bud. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Okay. All right. Ian Rappaport coming up. Word on the street with Rap Sheet. Hello, Ian. How are you? What's up? How are you? Very, very good. Thank you. Doing better than Urban Meyer, I would imagine, or maybe not. Here's a guy who had a long-term contract and was fired right away. Yes, and we don't know what happened to that contract. And I, obviously, you know, a lot of questions about the last couple of days, a lot of questions about the last couple of weeks and months, really everything in the Urban Meyer tenure. But one of the questions now, um, one of the questions now is how much money did he get paid? Did they fire him without cause, give him um, four more years at, you know, $9 million or whatever it, ended, it will end up being? Maybe. But did they find some cause to fire him or reach a set? I don't think they reach a settlement, but like, did they find some cause to fire him where they're going to try to go after his money? I would say that's some of the questions now going forward. Um, he is a uh, he's a failure in the NFL. He is a failure in the NFL. He came here to show that he could take his brand of football and win, and he won almost never and yeah. embarrassed himself uh, and humiliated a bunch of players while doing it. When he embarrassed himself and he humiliated a bunch of players while doing it, and if I go back a couple of months, was he like – 80% fired at that point? I would say, you know, after the situation um, with his non-wife and in the bar in Columbus, not flying home with the team, just, you know, allowing someone to take videos of him grinding on a woman or having her grind on him, um, you know, that's amazing. That's unbelievable lack of awareness, and I still don't understand how that happened. That was really where owner Shad Khan was like, all right, I need to take a look at this. I need to be convinced that he is a coach who should lead our franchise, not just like have our quarterback play well, but like lead our entire franchise. Um, and I think at that point it was close. Uh, and then everything that has happened the last couple of weeks has solidified that he should be fired. Can you see him ever getting back to the NFL again? No. I don't even know that he gets back to college football again. He was out for so long and he was a commentator and I'm sure somebody will hire him. He'll do some sort of sit down interview where he talks about the mistakes he made and how he's learned and all that. Um, hard for me to imagine he's a coach again though, because he treats people this way. Like why would you even want to be a coach and treat people this way? That's what I don't understand. Wow. Ian, the Omicron uh, variant is doing a lot of damage uh, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. Yeah. What's the COVID situation like in the National Football League? Are there any talks of restricting fans in stadiums? I have not heard anything about restricting fans in stadium. I have not heard anything about changing games, about Super Bowls, about anything. Um, I have heard about potential changes to the COVID-19 protocols. The NFL and the NFLPA are in discussions right now uh, about how to proceed, what to do. And I think the reason is this is not like last year. This is not 100 cases, everybody's sick, uh, and everybody's contagious. Yes, people are contagious, but the vast majority of people who have COVID-19, according to Dr. Alan Sills, the NFL's chief medical officer, um, our vast majority of people are vaccinated and asymptomatic. Vaccinated and asymptomatic. So what does that mean? 
if they are spreading something but nobody's getting sick, what are they spreading? What does the NFL do with it? How dangerous is it? If there's been no on-field spread of any COVID-19, why can't the guys play? These are the things that are being discussed now with the NFL and the NFLPA and figuring out how to proceed going forward. So I would imagine, based on what you just told me, a pause in the season, in the regular season, is highly unlikely. Oh, I would say very, very, very unlikely. If they were going to do that, they would just go to intense COVID-19 protocols, which they may do anyway, masks in yeah. the building, nothing indoors. I mean, there's, you know, look, they, everybody got through the season last year with enhanced protocols and Zooms and all of that. Like, we could do it again. But I think, you know, a larger question is, if nobody's getting sick, then what is this? And if there are positive cases in the playoffs and teams are losing very key players for obviously huge games uh, where there is no tomorrow, you just see the National Football League saying, next man up, you're out, you're on the COVID yeah. protocol list, it's too bad, yeah. but it is what it is. Yeah, now obviously you hope you don't get to that point. I mean, that's one thing when you have so, so, so many cases, everybody will generally have like heightened awareness, people start wearing masks. We'll stop doing meetings inside. You'll start being more careful. Like, and that's one thing, you know, it's funny, like Tom Brady made some headlines by talking about how this year was going to be harder than last year. Tom Brady is right. Tom Brady is right because everybody let their guard down and stopped wearing a mask. And now you have, you know, more COVID than we've had in a long time. And it's hard to kind of get a hold of it. Super Bowl going to Vegas in 2024. Super Bowl, this I'm going to Vegas in 2024. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, Super Bowl, Rap Sheet, and the Sick Podcast going to Vegas. Let's go. In 2024. Go. Yeah, now like hopefully, it. you know, we're not that big. Hopefully you can get us in. <laughs> uh, I'll, I know people. Uh, I know a lot of people. We'll see what I can do. Thank Actually, you. It is going to be interesting. Um, yeah. You know, I rem- I'll never forget this. I was in my basement in my old house. And I get a call. It said Mark Davis was meeting with someone. And I didn't know who at the time in Las Vegas. And I'm like, there's no way. There's no way the NFL is going to Las Vegas. There's no way anybody would let Mark Davis do this. It's just fake. It's all fake. And now, not only are the Raiders in Vegas, uh, the Super Bowl is also in Vegas. And the NFL has embraced gambling. It's amazing. What an amazing, and this is really going to, you know, this is going to be the big exclamation point on the league's partnership with gambling. So with the little experience that I have, I'll tell you that whoever called you, you can consider them a source now. Okay. Make sure they're on speed dial. They're legit. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that person was right on the money as they that, know that person. So obviously I'm not going to ask you how big this is for the NFL, that the Super Bowl is going to Vegas because the answer is pretty easy. It's huge, but. Um, this could, I mean, this could end up being the knowing Vegas and the way they do things could probably end up being the great, the biggest, greatest, most selling, you know, sporting event. I don't know if I'll say ever because the world cup obviously attracts fans from all around the world as does the super bowl, but probably, but more, but this could be so good that they might want to go to Vegas all the time. Well, I would go to Vegas all the time. You know, I've never yeah. been to Vegas. What? I've sure. never been to Vegas. It's it's a it's a fake world. It's like walking through a video game. It's great. Um, the draft is in Vegas this year. It is going to be huge and big and splashy, and I can't wait. Interesting what they do for the Super Bowl. Now, Super Bowls are remembered for what happens on the field. So off the field, it'll be great, but it's really about on the field. But yes, it is going to be massively big. Everything in Vegas looks like a big, like looks like a scene in a movie. I would imagine the Super Bowl is very much like that. And I, for one, am looking forward to the Super Bowl being in Vegas. Uh, I'm sure as so do many others. Can you give me a DeAndre Hopkins injury update? We'll be back for yeah. the playoffs. I don't think so. DeAndre Hopkins mm. is having surgery. I, I think it's tomorrow. Dr. Neil Alatros, one of the world's experts in knee and shoulders, he is performing the surgery. It's to repair a torn MCL, which is actually very rare that you repair a torn MCL. Usually you just let it heal by itself. Yeah. Um, The knee is obviously unstable on the medial side. Um, 
you know, there is a chance he's back for the playoffs. Six weeks is about the NFC title game. If they're in the Super Bowl, there's more of a chance. Uh, but I would certainly not say it is a guarantee. Um, Cardinals just lost a really good player. Is it safe to say that the Packers and the Ravens out of all the games is the one that you'll probably be paying the most attention to? And if not, what are you looking at? First of all, I'd like to know if Lamar is playing. You know, right now he hadn't practiced yet. Not a great sign. No. Um, I'm excited about tonight's game. Um, It's going to be awesome. Chargers Chiefs, great game. I'm excited about Patriots Colts. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of football in the next little bit. Um, I'm excited about Ravens Packers. And like, if Lamar doesn't play, it's still going to be, it's not going to be as good, but it's still going to be a good game. But the Snoop Huntley, their backup, certainly has, um, you know, certainly has has done a really nice job. There's a lot of really good football to be played the next five days or so. Well, and you and I are going to talk about all the football that uh, will have been played and the results and the injuries and whatever comes out of it. We'll do that again next week. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. Look forward to it, man. You too. Cheers. Me too. All right. It's time to make some cash. Money. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. What's going on? His handles. I run my bets. He's my buddy cash. Oh, I like the cap. Very, very nice. For those who uh, will be listening and not watching, let them know what you're sporting right now. What are you wearing, my man? I got the L.A. Rams cap on. Yeah. uh, uh, Tony, everyone, the the narrative has been this week that these guys are back. I don't think they're back. I think they've always been here. I just think they went through a little rough patch. They're legit, and it's a little bit of a change from my 49ers hat. And it's a little bit of a surprise to you guys. I'm not going to be on the Rams this week. By the way, pardon me, I love their white jersey. Uh, their white jersey is amazing. I like the Cardinals red jersey and the Rams white jersey, my two favorite jerseys. If I'm you sure. want to pick up any one of those jerseys or even both, sportbuffshop.com for all of your officially licensed sports apparel and even our sick merchandise, Marination, baby. Use code 615 for 15% off on all of their items. Cash, um, I spent most of it because Christmas is around the corner. I'd like to make more of it so I can actually start spending some on myself now. Who do you got? Talking about jerseys, guys, uh, I'm going to the Ravens, the Baltimore Ravens. I got a rumor that they're going to be bringing out the black jersey on Sunday against the Packers. Now, a lot of people are going to say, what does the jersey have to do with anything? Guys, listen to this. When the Ravens have brought out their black uniforms, they're 9-1 and against the spread. Stop. You believe this stuff? Look, I'm going to be honest. The play isn't because of the black jersey. I just think it's cool. I like the Ravens for five and a half. I think it's too many points. The line opened at seven and a half and went down to five and a half. That leads me to believe that Lamar is going to play. I know it's not official, so don't hammer it. Don't go crazy on it. But I expect you're going to get some news probably day before game time. I expect him to be in and play. I like the. You know, it's funny that you're saying this because every time I wear black shirts, I look absolutely beautiful, right? And when I don't wear black shirts. I look absolutely unbelievable. So anyway, continue. So you like the Ravens. All right. Who else I like you the like? Ravens plus five and a half. I like the Browns, guys. I know the Browns have like 17 or 18 guys on COVID injury reserve. But uh, going through the list, something that speaks out to me and stands out to me, this is a run-heavy team, guys. The Cleveland Browns, all they do is run the ball. That's what they're best at. And they're playing the Raiders. The Raiders have big trouble trying to stop the run. Recently. But hold on a second here. In the last decade... They have a losing record when they wear their brown jerseys. So now you're picking one team because of the black jerseys, but you're also going to pick a losing team because of their brown jerseys. Yeah, they look, I like the Browns this week. And here's the thing with the Browns. Last 20 years, they could have worn nothing and they would have had a losing record. So I'm going to stick with that. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, these guys aren't on the injury report. Give me the Browns. They're, I'm seeing them plus one, plus one and a half, plus 100 on the money line. Take take whatever you guys want in there. My final pick on the show, it's going to be the Saturday night football game. What's better than football on a Saturday, guys? Colts Patriots. I'm going to surprise a lot of people here. I I honestly think if I had to pick a Super Bowl winner, I'd go with the Patriots, but I'm not going to take the Patriots here uh, against the Colts. They're both off a of bye week, and I understand that. Uh, and Bill Belichick isn't someone I necessarily want to really be betting against often, but I'm going to do it in this spot. I like the Colts at home. The Colts are in a must, must, must win. If they want to keep their playoff chances alive, they need a win here. I trust them that they're going to run the ball. Jonathan Taylor is an absolute stud. It's going to open up the passing game. Another reason why I'm fading the Patriots a little bit is they're going to be a little bit overvalued in the marketplace. They've covered seven straight. Here's one more thing. The Patriots have the biggest game of their season next week against the Buffalo Bills. That will likely decide if they get a bye or if they win the division. I'll probably be on the Patriots next week, but this week is a fade spot for the Patriots for me. I love the Colts. Give me Carson Wentz, Frank Reich off a bye. 
Give me the to the window with the Colts on the money line minus two and a half. You you guys make your pick. I'm comfortable with both. There you have it. There's your picks and there's your football. Tune in next time. He's Cash. I'm Marinero, the Sick Podcast. Enjoy your football.